Hello everyone, welcome to another day of Valence League. Today we're going to be um, watching the Division 2B. We're going to have Garlic Bread Mafia against Prime Heads. Uh, I am TMG, I am here with my co-caster, Continent. Hello. And it's going to be a... For some good games. Since the last games that we casted, Viego has come out to do the live servers, so I'm really curious if we're going to see some Viego surprise gameplay. Maybe in the mid lane or in the jungle? What do you think? Um, I definitely like him more in the jungle. But uh, we'll see if any of these teams decide to pick him up. We're also playing on the new patch, so there have been some changes to items and to some champions that could uh, rise up in priority. The Ezreal Q buff, it went from 100% scaling, I think, to 130 scaling. It is AD scaling. It is now a predominant pick, I think, that he will become. Yeah, you already I have think. Shen banned. And both these teams won their last games. Um, Garlic Bread Mafia uh, and Prime Heads both won 2-0 uh, last week. So let's see which of these teams manages to um, continue their streak. I'm really curious if we're going to see some AP Twitch. I still think AP Twitch is a good pick. I've been playing a lot of League recently, and AP Twitch deals a lot of damage early mid game, and late game he can be a bit of a tr bit of a tricky situation to deal with if you do not have um, some dive power or CC. He can dish out a lot of damage really quickly. I have Kindred banned. What other uh, bands these might take? Okay. And Kaisa man. That's an actually. It's it's one of the best ADCs. I'm not sure if she necessarily deserves a ban, but am I be pointing to That's a not... certain bot side team card? Yeah. Uh, and I got the Udur for a bit clearer that has been. Um, it's definitely been um, one of the strongest junglers in the latest patches. We have seen Udir being picked a lot in the LCK. I've seen some games. He's really, really an interesting champion to watch being played out. Ooh, this is interesting. Diana mid lane. Are we going to see uh, an Irelia counter pick? Ooh, er, Diana yeah. Ivern. Ivern? Ivern also a very, very strong champion. Uh, got slightly nerfed, but I don't think anything of actually interest. His items going for the Moonstone Renewer into Staff of Flowing Water. It gives him a lot of power in team fights. And gives Diana a lot of survivability if he wants to do some 2v2 engages. Since Diana has the W shield with the Iron shield, it's going to be a lot of health if they need to melt before getting the finishing kill on one of them. The Rel has been picked for bot lane. Uh, yeah, I would love to see an aggressive AD carry to take advantage of the Rel. Maybe a AD carry with a dash to follow yeah. up with the Rel engage. And I'm not sure if... Ooh. I mean... Rel ults, this, kind of... Yeah, this tells me that they don't really want to play necessarily for a full lane domination. They're definitely going into more of a team fight decomp with both the Rel ult putting people inside for the MF to just destroy. It is a good combo, but um, let's see what they respond with. And it is a Senna. Is Senna, is it... I, I'm betting it's AD carry because Senna nowadays with the Kraken Slayer build is really predominant as an AD carry. 
Now support, you can also play her support, but she doesn't need get the amount of gold that she needs to have the big game impact that Senna usually has when she goes AD carry. And the support Senna, it's very hard to play a lane with support Senna. Um, you will almost always lose pressure unless they have even an even worse lane. Uh, because you don't have any CC, like you need to rely on Senna hitting a skill shot that is pretty easily dodged and gets stopped by minions. And so it's more of just a farm to late game lane. And but Senna with Ivern definitely gives them. It's going to be very very hard to do anything to some people in fights. Now we've seen a Swain, Darius, Alistar, and Ornban. Alistar being a predominantly good support nowadays. A nice, simple engage. Thresh, Thresh has been picked for Senna in the bot lane. Thresh also being a great support to have in your team comp. Give Senna some escape as well, giving the ability of maybe playing a little bit more aggressive at times. This is going to be an actual very interesting bot lane, how this is going to play out. I think Senna might abuse or try to abuse Rel to get her souls and Thresh with some cheeky hooks every, every now and again. Camille in the top lane, probably going to play for that split pushing and 1v1 dueling power. And a Ash. Let's wait for the lock-in. <laughs> <laughs> Seraphine would be a good pick. Seraphine's always a good pick. And we're seeing we see Galio. Galio. Yeah, we see the Galio Camille combo. Um, exactly. Basically, Ga uh, Camille ults the enemy AD carry, and Galio ults on top of the Camille. It's a actually a pretty great combo to have. Yeah, and uh, and um, there's a lot of engage out of Garlic Bread Mafia here. With that Rel going in, with the Camille and Galio ults jumping in, there it's very easy to force a fight, and then they have the MF for that extra damage, ulting in on to whatever confusion is happening. And the Renekton has been locked in. It's going to be an interesting top lane. Renekton versus Camille. Who do you think will win this dueling 1v1. I'm putting my bets on the Ivan Renekton duo in the top lane, since Renekton is really hard to kill, and Ivan does have those shields and brushes, but Camille can also do some sneaky ganking with her E, but I doubt she will be going for that. She probably, probably will play for her lane, and we'll probably see a lot of Ivan Diana 2v2ing, since they have a Generally good control. I mean, against Galio, Galio has a lot of MR, uh, MR and an MR shield and the uh, the taunt. So they, he and Uther could probably do a lot of damage to Ivan Diana. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's see. I mean, uh, it's definitely going to be a very interesting game. I think both teams have a lot of tools to um, quickly win a fight. Especially, as I mentioned before, with that Camille Gollywalt into Grell MF, that's a fight that you just can't lose. But on the other side, also, we got the Diana with the Ivern Shield into the Senna Heal. It's going to be very, very hard to kill people from Prime Head. I think this would be an interesting game. I'm th I think, I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking the Prime team. With Renex and Diana, the Senna, there's a lot of utility in that team with the Senna, Ivern, and Thresh. Senna might be the AD carry, but she is a good utility champion as well. She has heals, shields, damage, and the invisibility with her E and the speed up. So I'm putting my bets on the prime side of the team, the red side. Well, anything could happen at this point? What do you think? Who's going to win? Um, I've got to give it to I've got to give it to Garlic Bread. I think that engage is just so easy to hit, just so easy to win a fight. Let's also not forget that Prime Heads are the Division Three champions, 
So they have a lot of things going for them. This is it's gonna be a really good game. That's true. And to be fair, Santa's gonna be somewhat hard to get a hold of if uh, the AD carry plays it correctly. Uh, her E gives her, although in conjunction with like the amount of range she has, as soon as she gets a good amount of souls, Camille's gonna have to use a lot of things just to get to her. And I don't know, it's gonna, but if they kill Senna, if they kill Senna and Diana, then the fight is completely won. It's just gonna be very, very interesting. And uh, who can press those engage keys first? And who can mm -hmm. follow up those important targets first? I sense the, the daisy from Iron is gonna be an important th part in the game. Um, people always underestimate Daisy. Daisy is such a big tool for um, a, a weird, kind of weird engage. If Ivan shields Daisy and sends out Daisy to chase either Rel that doesn't have that much mobility unless she wanna lo wants to lose her mount, or uh, Galio if he doesn't want to use her, his E, they will probably get knocked up and slowed and might be a good pick for Thresh. Because if they're slow, the Thresh hook has to land. And be a good poke because Senna has a lot of range. So even if Thresh doesn't go in, Senna can do a really nice poke damage with the Kraken Slayer. So it's a it's a it's an interesting all rounded kind of draft. The the MF team, I I don't have a lot of expectations for Rel. I haven't seen a lot of Rel being picked. I know what Rel does and how oppressive she can be when her AD carry is ahead or her team is ahead because she has a lot of engage and a lot of tankiness and aggressiveness but I st I'm still betting on the Senna and the Diana pulling off and then Renekton maintaining the game up if the in fact the bottom side of the map loses because Renekton is also a really good predominant pick with the Gorge Ringer. Now Camille is, has, is going for the Grasp. Now this is important. Grasp Camille means she'll probably go for a lot of poking and a lot of skirmishing in top lane, otherwise you're not going to proc the grasp. But if Ivern has the presence in the top lane, that can be, spell disaster for Camille. Because if she uses her E to engage, she has no way to escape. And she will probably die to the Renekton stun and Ivern Q. It's going to be a really tricky situation for Camille. Uh, Gatekeeper Galio with Predator. Now that's interesting as well. He probably wants to roam around with his level 6. And wants to play with Udir. Udir is going to be a really big problem for Ivern, though. Udir is a really good jungler right now. He has a really good clear time. I think it's his Phoenix stance that is really popping off right now. People are even building Lich Bane now and again. It's going to be a really interesting bot lane. Thresh not going for the Guardian, going for the Aftershock to match the Rel tankiness. Or try to match the Rel tankiness. But Senna, I think Senna does... Uh, out damage a tiny bit the um, MF in terms of training because she can also heal Thresh, Thresh as well as doing damage and I th really think the Glacial Augment and the base damage that Senna has is really high in the early game. What do you think? I think it's really high. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Yes. Yeah, I think the Senna... It's definitely, although the Senna is one of the AD carries with the lowest base HP, which definitely hurts her in the early levels. Um, but as long as she doesn't get hit by those cues from MF, getting those minions, dealing the crit damage, I think she'll be fine. Um, it'll be a lane that definitely has pressure from uh, blue side. Uh, Senna does not, cannot farm even close to fast enough to keep up with MF. MF will just, if she wants to, she has control over the entire lane. And there, there are there are chances for Senna Thresh. If Thresh hits a hook with the Senna W on top, it's a very good trade, especially if Senna can um, just stay at range and not get hit by the Rel engage, because Rel does have a... Uh, somewhat short range. So, we'll see what happens. It's definitely a lane that could go to either side. I do have to give the advantage to MF. It's a lot easier to pull off. Um, but there is possibility for uh, 
the red side to pull off a surprise victory in the ball. Gotta give it to the red team with the standard initial positions, defending against the invade. Blue team did not uh, take up those positions. If Thresh were to try to invade from the bot side or the top side, they would be in a sticky situation. But now let's see how the lanes are playing out. Top lane is already pushing the wave. Camille is trying to match with her W. This game is going to be lane-wise. It's going to be a bit boring in the beginning because none of the champions are actually looking for a fight. Just wanting to farm a bit, get level 3, level 4. Maintain the prio to follow up with the junglers if they do in fact need that follow-up. And uh, it's going to be a lot of depending. A lot of the game will be dependent on the junglers and the bot lane with the thresholds. Yeah, and I'm also interested to see where the junglers path and how they path. Um, we see the Ivern going for maybe a more bot side focused thing to protect their uh, bot lane, but Udyr is just full clearing the jungle. Just doing Udyr things. The electric is on Diana doing a number on Galio. Galio shouldn't really take up those fights when he has Predator. He does not have the Keystone advantage versus the Diana. So she will probably dish out in the early game a lot more damage in the trading than she, than uh, he is. But they are already at the blue buff. He might look for a top gank since Renekton is pushing out. Ivern also in the top side of the map. And Holy Diana... Shit, Ooh, it's a gank oh, no. mid lane. Okay. Ivern shows up. The Galio E's the Diana and has to flash away. It's a good gank taking off the summoner from Galio. Galio is now very vulnerable to Diana freezing the wave under her tower. We have a hook thresh on the bot lane, but Senna isn't looking to engage, but Rel is. Rel goes in, stuns the thresh. Thresh is low HP. Renekton getting ganked topside, and both of the engages, engages deal to no end or result. Motlane only used heal and Renekton because you're in stuns. Rel is going back in. Gonna stun. She's not gonna stun. She stuns now, both of them. MF might get a kill, but never mind. She does not have the Q up nor the auto reset. Senna is, in fact, completely fine. We see the ignite burn on both of the supports. Senna is getting really chunked down. And the game is back to normal. Ivern though in the bot side might be a gank, trying to get Pryo over the bot lane again. Rel has to dash out. But Udyr is also bot side, so they, if this is a 3v3, I think the blue team will have the upper hand. Let's see how this plays out. Ivern matching with the Udyr in the bottom side. Rel going to help Udyr. Ivern has to back off. And the game is stabilizing. And a lot of action this last couple of minutes, just everything in the map just fighting. And nothing really happened. There, there's a lot of, you know, just engaging and then kind of having to fall back to not get engaged on and just those very thin lines. Um, bot lane, that was the heal uh, that has to be used by Senna. So, uh, blue team definitely an advantage. Like I said, there wasn't really any type of heavy kill pressure in any of the lanes. It's more of a farm to level 3, level 4, and then something might happen. Senna overstaying, getting knocked up and then stunned by the rail, and MF takes her down with the first blood thrush, trying to land something to put it on the tower. Does not succeed, and now we see the MF with one kill over the Senna. And great play by the uh, Rel, just taking advantage of Senna having to walk <laughs> forward because the wave was in a very, very bad position. MF had a very good freeze and just taking advantage of that, Senna doesn't have mobility, hitting her with a W and then just easy picking. These are going to be some really interesting fights for the Drake after level 6. In my opinion, I kind of think MF and Rel are doing a great job and they will do a great job in the team fights with their combo. But also, Diana and the, the TP from Renekton can also prove differential in this bottom side skirmish for the Drake. I really think Blue Team is really inclined to win the Drake priority, since the Rel is showing a lot of presence in the lane and a lot of willingness to get prior in her lane so she can run with the jungler. Now we see a 
Weird situation in the mid lane. Ivern's there. I don't think Galio knows he's there. Diana's trying to set up a gank. Galio is just pushing the wave. Diana goes in, ults. Ivern trying to follow up. Diana blocks the Galio dash. Ivern hits the Q. Will this be enough? And it is, in fact, enough. Diana gets the kill and wastes nothing. Yeah, just no flash on Galio from that gank a while ago from Ivern. The flash is coming up, but it's still not up, and the advantage that taken. Ivor and Diana fighting Udir. Will Udir fall right here? He will not. Udir has phase rush. It's a really good situation for the blue team now, since they have this weird fight that's going on. Rel is going overextending for the red part. They need to fall back into a front to back fight. Sen is getting ignited. Rel will fall here. Diana and Camille. Fighting Ivern, Camille fighting Ivern, I mean, Diana trying to protect. Diana coming back for the bot lane to help the bot lane fight. Udir gets the Senna. Galio will finish off Diana. Diana flashes the Galio Q. And Renekton will get the enemy AD carry. Renekton can have a turnaround in this fight if he has Q up, since he has Red, uh, the um, Red Fury stat, but it will not be enough. And this fight goes towards the blue team. Yeah, and they end up taking advantage of this fight. It'll, it looked very good for uh, Reds at the beginning. Um, they definitely took advantage of the numbers that they had. Uh, getting uh, the after getting the kill on Galio, just going in Rel a little bit too overextended, but then both the teleports from the top laners, Renekton holding people, but Camille just went on the back line and just caused a lot of chaos, a lot of problems. And then the fight just lasted so long. Galio managed to come back at the end, hit a pretty good taunt. Sending Agent in the bot lane, Rel getting picked off under tower. Ivern is here, they will chase this. Glacial Augment slows from the Senna. Will this be enough to kill Rel? Daisy's going after her, she has the movement speed. Daisy will be able to ca caught up with her, uh, catch up with her. And she will in fact die to the Ivern Shale damage and the Daisy auto attack. Now we see a shift in the prio in the mid lane, as well as the standard prio in the top lane. Renekton completely dominating the lane. Camille with a nice trade actually. And a good stun. Renekton is looking to continue the trade to make it worth, but only ends up getting it worse for himself. The river fight that happened a while ago was really bad, the separation that Red Team did. It wasn't a front-to-back fight, it was a really sloppy fight, and they cannot have these fights versus a, a Camille and a Galio. They excel in sloppy fights. Renekton also excels and got a few kills, but that was that. And the fight ended up giving the Drake over to the blue team, in my opinion. Just the part where they separated a lot kind of damaged their ability to fight. Also, the fact that bot lane was bo both of the bot lanes were level 5. Now we see it engaging in the mid lane. Ult, Sen ult, and Diana ults. And Diana could not finish off Galio or block his dash, unfortunately. And a good flash by Galio to dodge that Sen ult. That would definitely have been the kill. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't like the tier on Senna. I really she... don't like him. And why don't you like him? Uh, because you are not gonna upgrade that tier anytime soon. If you're going for the Kraken Slayer build, which I just think it's flat out the best build. <coughs> you definitely need to go for the Kraken Slayer and the Rage Blade. Uh, because it's the interaction. Here we see an engage in the top lane. Camille ulting and Renekton. Renekton really stuck in position right now with the Camille ult, And he will fall to the amazing damage that um, Camille and Udir are giving out. Udir with the actual surprising amount of damage with the Phoenix Dance. I said that before. It, the, his Phoenix Dance was really strong. I have no idea he could do that to a Renekton. It was what, 300... HP just done with one out with an auto attack. That was really insane. Ivor now holding the wave. And we might see Udir soloing the Rift Herald since he has the prior over the top lane and the prior in the mid lane. Diana now in a sticky situation since Galio has his Merc Treads and the X Tech alternator. It gives a lot of damage potential. Bot lane seems pretty chill. Galio is roaming bot though. If Thresh engages here, it's a bad thing for him. Rel tries to follow up. 
will not go to anyone. Yeah, it was a and death roll being used up. Fresh, canceling the Rel jump. And if Rel hits that jump and presses the ultimate button, that's gonna be a very bad, but we got a gank mid lane. Bot lane is pushing up since they have priority. Galo is re-engaging knowing that the Rel will arrive soon. Rel does have ultimate as well as MF. Rel goes in, prones the ultimate, and MF will get a juicy all off with a nice bit of damage. Galio gets one kill, Rel gets the other one. And now the red team's bot lane is also rotating a bit late though, because they did not have the priority to do so. Galio and Rel looking for the re-engage or maybe shoving just the wave. While top tower just went bye-bye by the Rift Herald that the Udyr made. And after that fight, Blue Team just been on top of the game, making plays left, right, and center. Just Udyr just going for that top lane, shutting down the Renekt, and giving Camille that advantage so she can become even more obnoxious even earlier. And then the attempted gank on mid lane, trying to get Galio taking advantage of the fact that his flash is down, something that they have been able to do before, but this time. Because of MF getting the level 6, Senna still doesn't have the item. And Senna getting ganked by the Udyr. Udyr with the amazing movement speed. Uh, he's getting off his E and the turbo chem tank. But unfortunately, will not result in a kill since Senna had flash. But now Senna does not have flash for the Drake fight, which is a little sticky situation for her since she has no dashes. Rel trying to clear out the vision and get some priority on the lower half of the jungle and prepping for this inevitable trick. Um, yeah, just really, really good advantage from Garlic Brad Mafia, just playing with their lane pressure, using the early game damage that they have, and taking advantage of the fact that Santa takes time, Santa needs items, Diana needs items, Ivor needs items, uh, there, there, there's a lot of time that's needed for Red Team to hit their power spikes. Well, on the other side, we've got Udyr with one item just doing a lot. We've got MF with one item just doing a lot. And it's definitely a very, very good early game advantage for um, Garlic Red Mafia. Renekton trying to look for the pick. He is now falling really behind Camille in terms of presence in this map. I still think Renekton in a fight can be a really, really powerful champion to deal with, but Camille as well showing a lot of positive feedback in terms of fighting as well. She has this, the um, Divine Sunderer, a really good item on Camille. Wish she went for the Trinity Force to go full damage, that would be a lot more interesting, but I get the choice of the Divine Sunderer. And the enemy, enemy team has a lot of damage. Rel looking to pick off the Diana. TP from Renekton already. They're prepping a fight. Uh, from Camille, I mean. And um, it results in nothing. Camille goes in, trying to get a pick. She has ultimate. Ivan gets ulted out. He will probably fall here. Senna ultimate. The MF powerhouse ult in the jungle. And this will be a excellent fight for the blue team. Gets the flash auto Q auto off. Uh, to kill the Senna. To kill the Diana, I mean. Renekton still trying to be the powerhouse of the champion that he is doing a fight. He still has God Drinker. If he can pop it off, he could pop it off. But he will die before he could pick up the Thresh Lantern. The blue team is really showing a lot of predominant damage dealers and tankiness for the front line while being able to pick off the enemy team one by one. This is looking like a blue side victory right from the very beginning. MF is already really ahead of Sen. Yeah, definitely. Very, just very aggressive, very just taking every single play, every single advantage they can get and backing off when there's nothing else to be gained. That was a little scary in, for a couple of moments last fight because Renekton just coming in at full HP, but he just got instantly CC locked, couldn't even do anything, the heal didn't do anything on him, and he just ended up falling because... Uh, it's, it's so easy for Blue Team to just go in, go out, just do whatever they want. And they all, everyone has their first items, they're working on the second. While on Red Side, we've got Diana still stuck 
and not being able to buy her first item. And Ivern, as I said, still needs that extra item to join the Moonstone. Senna still needs that Rage Blade to pop off with the Kraken Slayer. The red team should not be looking for fights, they should be looking to scale up to get those items and then to fight when they hit their bar spot. We also saw the MF flash to finish off the Diana on the tower. That was really a strange decision because red team could easily just burst her down before she could do so. For, for, fortunately for the MF she could. Red with a giant engage into the MF ult. This was a really, really great pick. They will probably get uh, the top tower because Galio is, is in split pushing and Renekton does not have teleport. Renekton is trying not to match but they will lose the bot tower because of it. And it is now a new amazing lead that the bot lane got for their team. Galio kiting a bit with the Renekton, skirmishing in. This will be a 1v1. Maybe Renekton pops ult, doesn't continue. Uther is coming. Uther is on the way to the plane, so Renekton making the correct decision to back off. We're seeing some amazing Rel gameplay. Rel will pick off the Ivan again. And Camille trying to fight off with Diana. Uther is close by. Santa trying to get a pick as well with her W, but there is no follow up because it is not possible. We're seeing an amazing Rel presence this game. Was not expecting that one. Well, being a real powerhouse in the bot lane. Doing really good and finding those opportunities, getting those engages into multiple targets. MF just pressing that R key and doing so much damage. There's no way anyone can reply. And just Rel is so tanky that it, there is no pick potential. If she misses the engage, she's just, she can literally just walk that out. And we're gonna have the Drake and we're looking at the 23, 24 minute soul and an infernal soul on a team like Garlic Red Mafias is gonna be very, very dangerous. Good decision by the red team trying to trade the Drake for the Rift Arrow since it's the best they can do at the moment. But they will lose the bot tower because of it. It's a too slow rotation since the five of them went top. Yeah, that's what I don't think it was worth sending five people, especially since it's the second Rift Herald, and uh, the first Rift Herald should have some priority since plates are up, but the second Rift Herald is not as important, and it is a good decision to take it since there is nothing else they can do, but I think it's a bit of overkill sending everyone in. Uh, they should have sent a couple of members and everyone else just catch some waves and get some more farm because that's what they need is more farm and more gold coming into their pocket. For now the MVP of this game is looking like a Rel or Udyr. They're being really really efficient with their champions. Rel not giving a second of a breathing time in the bot lane this entire match. Thresh constantly looking out for the engages but it's never possible to look out for every single one. Rel is really playing her champion to the maximum potential that it can be played in this game. While Udyr has been doing a no ni really nice uh, job in farming up his advantage over Ivern, as well as following up some of the counter ganks and engages that he can catch. Now we're gonna see a Baron being spawned up. Udyr already taking out the vision. This might be a good opportunity for a Baron fight for the blue team since they are so far ahead. They just need to push one of the objectives to lure out the red team. And they just turn around and fight them and completely demolish them. Because they're so far ahead in terms of items right now. I think they just they can just pull off a smooth engage over the Baron and win even if they are chunked a bit down. Because this is indeed a early, early game Baron. What is <laughs> Rel giving some love taps to Renekton? <laughs> yep, both of them knowing that that is not going anywhere. They are both way too tanky for anything to happen. And the Baron, as I said, is and being started up by the blue team. And there's no vision. This might be a sneaky Baron. 
Renekton going back to base, they do not know that they are doing Baron. Galio is in mid, trying to distract them from the Baron, I think. Oh, MF actually getting a really bit chunked down because she does not have lifesteal, I think. Yeah, she does not have lifesteal, so, so she will get chunked down a bit. Diana now suspecting and trying to ward, but Galio is trying to zone them out. Ivan is going to get completely zoned out from Baron. He will not be able to steal it with his smite, I think. Diana goes in with an insane three-man ult and a center ult. Diana getting completely popped. Ivan can get in the Baron pit, does not outsmite the level 13. Udir, Udir is still chasing after, after Santa, and he will get a nice tick of the damage of his Q. It was a really not good decision by trying to steal because 13 level Udir has a higher damage smite than level 9 Ivan. This was not a very wise decision. A really nice chain of ultimates, but the damage is simply not there. The blue team is really far ahead in terms of golden items. And it's a bit of a desperation play in a bit. They're just trying to get that Baron buff, trying to get them off. And it did. It was a very good ult by Diana, catching three people off. Um, Camille getting picked off, has the burst flash. It was definitely a very good ult, and Santa following up. But no one else was there. If they had a Renekton flank on it, it could have been great. But then Ivern jumping in, trying to steal the Baron. Wood is just four levels above, there's no way you're gonna outsmite him. And a bit of a desperation play coming out, just trying to get something, and they end up just losing even more. Now we see Senna trying to go for the Rage Blade, but I don't think she will have it, and I think Blue Team will end the game before she can have it, because she's starving in terms of gold. She cannot find a soul lane to farm right now. Rift Owl is used top since their dragon is gonna spawn. An interesting play, but Camille does have TP. She could go up and take it, but it's three towers. Rift Owl will probably die out, and Camille won't be able to win. A nice engage from Rail. Two men stun, MF ult, Galio ult to follow up. But as I said, Blue Team is just so far ahead in terms of items, it's gonna be a easy fight for Blue Team. A nice four man, oh, three man actually, Diana's uh, ult, but this will be as far as red team goes. Yeah, blue team just smacking their wallets around. There's so much gold. It's a 14,000 gold advantage. It's... There is no way you're getting even anywhere close to winning a fight at this point. It's just... Red, blue team just working on their third items, while red team's still working on their seconds, just looking far away from them. And just a great game from the side of our Garlic Red Mafia. Looking clean from beginning to end. Winning that fight in the river. Ooh, this might be a nice turnaround for the red team. Blue team kind of throwing right here. Uh, Rel goes in trying to engage, but the MF does not have ultimate. Ultimates are not all up for the blue team. Our red team is showing a tiny bit of advantage. Rel goes down. Galio will go down after her. Unless the Uder gets up and personal with Senna and Diana, and he does get both of them down. Galio bursts the Zonias, and as we said before, the item advantage is just, and the level advantage as well, yeah. just too much for Red Team to handle. A clean game from Blue Team. There is no way Blue Team should ever win that fight. It was so bad, but they just have so much more money and so much more XP that it just there is absolutely zero chance for Team Moon. That was, I think, the best fight they could have hoped to get, and it was it was just too late. It was Blue Team got their first fight, got those advantages. Udir went top lane, shut down the Renekton, and gave Camille those advantages, and then. From then on, it was just no way to come back. Rel with a couple of just good early game engages in the bot side. And then every lane just started bleeding. And they had no response. They didn't have their items. They didn't have their power spikes. There was such easy engage tools from Garlic Brand Mafia. Popping their ultimate, just having to press those R buttons. And with so much more damage, 
it was just a clean game and very well played. And we'll see how Prime had reacts, and we'll see if they maybe choose to ban some things or pick them away, maybe change up their team comp a little bit. We'll see what they decide to do for game two. Rel really surprising us with the amazing engages, carrying the early side, uh, the early time of the uh, game really hard. Really interesting pick, actually. I've never seen uh, a I've never seen. I actually seen, but I never expected Rel to have such a predominant impact and presence in the entire game throughout the game, actually. So really showing up. Getting the MF fed and then managing to push the advantage of her team by the using her ultimate and the constant engages that she has. Definitely very well played. And um, we're going to go into a very short um, break, getting ready for uh, the second game. And we'll see you back to see how these teams react to this very dominant first game. See you in a few minutes. See ya.
are back for game two of today. And we'll see what is going to happen in this draft phase and what team's response to this game one is going to be. I'm betting this game will go a lot better for the prime team, the prime heads. But Garlic Mafia really showing a lot of, I mean, experience in terms of league. They did all of the clean, correct calls on what to do objective-wise for the for the standard of gameplay. They did a really nice... Actually, they picked a really good team comp with the Camille Gallio combo. The Rail MF combo was not expecting the MF, uh, the uh, Rail pressure that she had. Well, they have our first ban. Lilia has been banned. Lilia really showing up in the uh, pro play. Really good champion to have. Really high mobility, high, kind of high damage. She has the true damage on her Q and a lot of um, utility with her alt sleep. Where they see Kindred ban. Yola. Uh, and the Olaf, um, I'm not sure. I think uh, there could be a neuter ban, could be justified to uh, get just take that jungle that is really, really strong out of the game. But they go for the Shan ban, which is interesting. Uh, see, maybe they're looking to get a Renekton top lane because Shan. It's a pretty hard matchup for an Acton. I am not already getting banned. Seems like they don't want a repeat of the Ivern. Let's let's see what kind of team comp they will be picking. I'm suspecting a really mid lane, a mid um, mid team comp. A lot of focus in the bot lane, as usual, in the bottom side of the map. We already have a Kaisa first pick. The jungle pool is very, it was very attacked in these bands. And taking the rail out, it's a, it's a good pick, the rail, because Kaisa rail is a very nasty combo. Uh, rail can just, uh, Kaisa can just jump into the back line with the ult, and rail pops her the stun, just stunning everyone in the middle, so it's a very good pickup denying that combo from Garlic by Mafia. Now we're going to see the uh, Skarner actually being picked. Skarner is a really interesting pick. You don't see him very often. He can have a weird impact in the game that we might not be in, in, suspecting. And the Anivia. Anivia Morgana. With the Morgana. There's Morgana a lot actually. of magic damage on the side of Garlic Bread Mafia for now. The, the shield, though, the um, black shield from Morgana actually might be a little bit of a problem for Skarner if he runs up to try and ult someone. That person can get instantly black shield, and there goes the Skarner game impact with his ultimate. Yeah, and the victor reply. Um, I'm not sure I'm the biggest fan. I don't think it's bad. But I'm not sure if it's the biggest fan. Um, Anivia is just going to be able to farm endlessly in mid lane. And I'm not sure if Victor's ever going to do anything. I kind of think Victor, in terms of team fighting, has a bit of a presence to match with the Anivia presence. Even if he just farms the entire lane. I think he's actually kind of not OP... Not very strong. He's kind of a decent champion in terms of damage-wise now. Um, now we're going to see... What's going to be really interesting is what red team will pick for the AD carry in that team composition. Let's see Callista. Callista. They're going for the early game. The laning phase, actually. Trying to shut down Kai'Sa. Yeah, and we're seeing kind of a role reversal here. Uh, this time, Garlic Brand Mafia going for more of the scaling comp with the Anivia, with the Kai'Sa. And 
Prime had just going all in for that early game. Skarner Pars back at level six. Rail engage Callista just being oppressive in the lane. We have the Orn locked in. Orn, a really, actual, really, really strong top laner. He can be a excellent tank, excellent initiator, and disengage with his ultimate. And is actually a pretty good pick with the Anivia, because Anivia Wall actually can serve for Ornt E. So that's going to be an interesting combo. And now we have Kha'Zix in the jungle. What do you think about that one? I am not the biggest fan. I, it just, I don't think it fits well with the team comp they're going for. I think they have a re really, really strong team comp for those kind of mid-late game fights. I was expecting a jungler maybe more to frontline or even to peel for the carries. I was not expecting Kazix. Kazix, I'm not seeing um, how he's going to play because most of his lanes will not have that priority and Skarner will be able to just run all over the map. Now this is going to be an interesting game. Malphite versus Orn in the top lane. I kind of think Orn has a bit of an advantage in terms of Malphite. We'll see if any one of them brings Grasp this game. The Arn has a good damage compared to Malphite. Malphite has his E who can slow the enemy attack speed, but I don't think that affects Arn proccing passive that much since Arn just knocks you up and then doubles you. So you can't really E before he gives out dishes out that auto attack and that damage. Don't think there's a lot of kill pressure top lane either. Both of them can just like get away. But Kha'Zix's pick is doesn't really match with the team comp that they're going for. I think maybe another another jungler <laughs> as an assassin will go really well. The Morgana Kaisa though in the bot lane is actually really interesting because Morgana Kaisa aren't that weak early game. And Kalissa and Rel might misplay. And might can misplay in the bot lane. I'm not saying they will. But if they misplay, that's a huge chunk of pressure that Skarner loses on his map. Skarner really has a lot of priority. Victor gets priority mid lane, and Callista Rel are being picked for the priority mid lane in the engage. So I really think that Skarner will be able to roam around the map better than Kha'Zix, unless he tries to fight Kha'Zix 1v1. And if, even if he does, I see his laners roaming really fast, and this turning to a 2v1. Now, the Anivia mid lane is going to be an interest, interesting lane to watch and watch how Anivia will play out her lane since Anivia pre level 6 is a little bit iffy compared to Victor. And, but can still surprise with her stun E damage and maybe set up again with Kha'Zix burning the Victor flash. That will, that's going to take some time to watch what's going to happen. Really interesting in how the bot lane goes. Because top lane, it's tanks. Uh, let them have at it. Really interesting on what role Kha'Zix will play in this game. If he's going... He might go a weird Gore Drinker fighting build and not go the Duskblade full assassin. Or he actually might do that. Trying to play around Victor and trying to clean off Victor and Callista. I, I just don't see that happening though. And the bot lane will see if Callista Realm misplay versus Kaisa Morgana, because the Morgana Bind and the Black Shield are really oppressive. Uh, or if they get what they aim for with the Callista pick and get off a nice chunk of kills off the bot lane, because Kaisa really, I think, loses in terms of damage output versus Callista, because Callista just has that Hail of Blades or Lethal Temple attack speed and damage off of her E that Callista is very well known for. Yeah, definitely. Kaisa needs to get those items under her belt, needs to get some sort of stat boost um, and to just allow her to upgrade her abilities and pop her passive more frequently. Um, but there is, as I said, there is a chance, especially before that level 6, before those and those first items start coming in, that probably shield bow going in for Kalista. Before she gets that, if she misplays, if she gets hit by a bind, and Rel doesn't manage to find a counter engage, and Morgan and Kaisa manage to just 
burst her down, it's going to be rough. And very smart by Callista, taking the cleanse to kind of eliminate that possibility, even with, with the misplay, just cleansing away the, the Morgana by and it's going to make it very, very rough for the Bullside bot lane to win now. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a very, very interesting game. Yep. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. My mic was muted. I didn't notice. <laughs> yes. Gonna be really interesting with the phase rush in the mid lanes and the phase rush on Skarner, plus the grasp on the top lane. They're just gonna be slapping around at the top lane, having a little scuffle between them. The eyes are on the bot lane though, Kai'Sa with the Halo Blades and Kalissa with the Halo Blades. Both of them really hit or miss now in the mid in the bottom lane, because Kalista really has that damage over the Kai'Sa, but does not have the heal. She has to take cleanse because of the Morgana Binds. And now we're going to see the standard positions for the red team and blue team. Morgana trying to stack her AP item, trying to get a bit of a bigger gold off of Rel. And this is going to be a very interesting game, actually. Very interesting bot lane. I'm really curious to see how this one will play out. Oh, let's see what, uh, what's going to happen. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. I think a small lead could just snowball out of control for either of those teams. So I think the junglers are going to have a very, very high impact on this game and we already see Skarner starting on his red buff pathing towards that all-important bot lane exactly it is wise for him to play towards the bot lane because if Kal Kalista does not shut down Kai'Sa it will defeat a bit of the purpose on why she was picked I think mid lane the standards wave clear off of Victor and Nivea there is there isn't really that big of a Kill pressure down mid lane, both of them with teleport, both of them with phase rush. I think they'll just be looking out for farm. Kalista trying to poke, already an engage from Rel. Ka Kaisa in a sticky situation, but actually Kalista having to cleanse off the ignite. And Kaisa getting the first blood, this is really a bad situation for red team. Rel trying to get the finishing blow on Kaisa, has the flash, gets the finishing blow. But Morgana is behind her, Morgana still has flash, flashes forward, and now Rel will also, maybe, actually, Rel with a smurf, dashes out, gets the shield, and Morgana will not be able to finish it off, and even takes a tower shot. A one-for-one one in the bot lane. Yes, definite advantage uh, for the blue side. Uh, Kaisa getting the kill, and the wave uh, is probably not in the best position, I can't actually see it. But a, a very good engage uh, from the blue side, just taking advantage of the fact that there is no heal from Kalista and oh, Morgana is stacking up a bit. We see Orn top lane slapping around Malphite, Malphite slapping around Orn, trying both of them to stack the grass, but Orn now has the upper hand since he engaged when he was level 3, getting the poke off with his Q. Malphite in a sticky situation now, will probably be okay though, I doubt Orn will try to dive him. Just a really bad situation to be in farm-wise, because now he has farm on the tower. Bot lane now, having lost the prio. Skarner is trying to look for a gank, having done the scuttle crab, and now moving into the enemy jungle. Kha'Zix is now top side. Maybe they will try something sneaky on the top side jungle, and maybe not, because Kha'Zix actually needs a lot of farm to get his items. 
or get his early game item, I think he might go this play this game. Skarner going for Considering a game. he brought Dark Harvest. We're gonna binding on the Skarner. Skarner's trying to look for the gank, will not be able to. This is where I talked about Morgana. Has a really strong presence in the lane. And already showing, as in last game, that he is not afraid to use that champion to gain the priority that his team needs. Definitely, and uh, red team does have the wave in their side, but it's starting to push towards blue team. And we'll see how they, what they want to do. We'll see if they want to go for a reset and just try this. We'll see if maybe, oh no, Scarner's actually pathing topside. I was wondering if they wanted to go and tr attempt to dive, uh, taking care of the advantage in levels. Uh, but, uh, they decide to just back off. And I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I really think Kaisa is very happy with how things are right now. She got the extra build, bit of gold, got a bit of pressure kind of saving her from the early levels. And now I think Callista has to wait for that ultimate for the level 6. And that's when they have to get an advantage. Otherwise, Kaisa is just going to run away with the game. Rel trying to get off the engage, but Morgana is indeed ready. To not be caught off by that, by that engage. Now, Cloud Drake, first Drake, not that important, but the following Drakes are. Skarner, pathing now to the bot side jungle. Kha'Zix is already in the bot side jungle, but the bot lane priority is kind of mixed. A nice binding onto Kalista, but Kaisa cannot follow up because Drell is shielding her. And Nivia and Orn still with the same lane status. Both of them just farming, slapping around each other. Nothing much happening. Or actually, going for the strong poke, but will not win the trade. Malphite showing he's not afraid to fight. Malphite now in a tricky situation. Flash from Orn in the auto attack. Malphite wastes this flash and gets taken down by the Orn. Nice binding by Morgana onto the Rel. Rel has to dash out. And now, it's back to farm. Bot lane, lost priority, and top lost priority, red team is again in a sticky situation. Skarner uses the plant and the trinket to go and try to gank. That gank will not be successful since Anivia is already ready to rotate. Anivia has no mana though, so will not have that much of an impact. Kalista is in a tricky situation. She lost all of the priority in the lane. And I really doubt if both of them hard engage on Kaisa that they will get the kill. This is a strange, strange point of the game because now Red Team that has a early-ish game team composition for the Dragon does not have the priority they need for the Dragon. Now Kha'Zix will be able to farm the jungle in peace. Anivia is now level 6 so she will push waves and get the priority that she needs faster than Victor. And also Orn is in a comfortable position since Skarner cannot threaten his top side any longer since uh, actually he does not have a lot of Skarner may actually try and gank since Malfi has ultimate we'll see how this one plays out Orn is really pushed out and Kalista Rel trying to clean out vision for the Drake since everyone is missing but, uh, I don't think top lane is gonna really matter it's tank versus tank no matter what happens, both of them are still going to be very, very useful. Uh, especially being exactly. able to fight two very big ultimates that don't really, it doesn't really matter if they're ahead or behind, uh, unless it's a huge difference. If it's one kill, maybe a couple of kills, it doesn't really matter, but it seems like Skarner is going to go for it. As I said, Skarner checking around, there is no vision. Orn doubles forward, it's this really bad situation for him. Skarner gets the ultimate off. Anivia though is teleporting. Orn pops off the ultimate. This might be a good team fight for the blue team. Since Anivia is indeed top lane, Victor does not follow up. Malphite has burned the ultimate, but he has no flash and will get taken down by Anivia. Skarner now in a sticky situation. Will Anivia have the stun prepared? She throws him off to the... That's actually a really nice stun in play by Anivia, throwing him off to the Rift Earl. Flash burned by Skarner. Not a very good flash. Misses the stun by Orn. Anivia will go to Egg Nivia. Orn has to back out. He does not have the damage to finish off either Victor or Skarner right now. So he's now in a 
very not great situation. Kha'Zix is topside, but doesn't show any signs that he will go for on to help Orn. Never mind, he gave up on the blue, and I will try to help Orn escape. Or maybe even turn around. Now Orn's too low HP, that will not be possible. Phase Rush proc from Victor, and the stun! That's a nice interaction! <laughs> And now it's back to same old, same old. Anivia got indeed that kill on Malphite, and Victor got the kill on Anivia. Both of them now kind of the same farm, not exactly the same XP, so nothing really has changed for the mid lane. Just that Victor doesn't have flash, and Anivia doesn't have flash or teleport. Neither does Victor. So it's kind of nothing really happened in a way, and kind of something happened, because now Skarner. Is, has that presence in the game back. People know that he exists since Skarner really needs to put out the pressure. Tazix still farming, still scaling. He's going for the Dusk Blade since he has the Dark Harvest. Really don't know how that one's gonna play out, but really curious to see. Yeah, and I think it's the first time we've seen Garlic Grand Mafia be a little bit too overzealous and go a little bit too hard. They turn around that gank initially with the Anivia teleport. Victor actually teleported to mid lane just when that play was starting to happen, and Anivia takes advantage of that, teleports into the top lane, turns it around, have and but... engage the rail completely annihilates the Black Shield and Callista completely yeah. annihilates her health bar. This is actually a really nice engage from Rel. Yeah, that level six bar spike. This is when the bot lane needs to make something happen. They lost the level one. They need to do things now, otherwise Callista will just not be a champion for the rest. Kaisa going for the Dirk? Is she going for Collector? I don't know what's happening here. Uh, uh, you usually go for it after you get um, the item, the first Ooh, item. Skarner? You get the, the Q upgrade. Skarner is dead Ooh. here. Skarner just gave Kaisa an advantage again. That was yeah, not a good cool decision. Crap. Didn't really have vision and bot lane Ooh. going in. Rel going engaging with the Callista ultimates. Will that be enough? That will not be enough. Morgana hits the bind, but Callista burns the cleanse. And, um, I think the, the Kaisa, it's to get the Q upgrade faster. You usually do it after you get your first item completed. Uh, or first time, your first components completed, it gives you that little bit extra AD. I am not the biggest fan of rushing at first. I think just sitting on some other components is better, but it'll end up having the same purpose. And we do, we do see the Callista Rally starting to be able to fight back. Um, Kaisa was forced to heal up and fall back. Uh, but just not enough damage, you know, they were just too close to the turret, and the blue team would just get to push the lane since the engage didn't end up being good. They and we have a gank in the mid lane, Skarner going vroom vroom, getting the ult off on Anivia, Anivia now getting stunned by the victor, and the kill going to Skarner, Anivia getting caught off guard right there. Incredible actual gank from the Skarner with the chem tank item i mean that, that item is really really interesting it's a lot of room room gonna be happening for skander since he has the movement speed from the from his w and bot lane is again the lane to watch top lane on has the slight advantage not gonna matter a lot because they're both tanks both have their sh fair share of utility and tankiness but now we have the interesting part the kha'zix will now start doing more around the map since he completed the dust blade in his back so i think the strike fight will be the fight that will decide where the game will take place now is it for the blue team or the red team who will have the advantage red team already has the vision already has the priority bot lane from the blue team is trying to push out the wave so they have the bot side minions pushing on the tower but the red team already has the Drake chunked down in terms of health this much. Engage on the Morgana doesn't go as well as Rel planned. Rel will get completely chunked down by Kaisa and Morgana. Kaisa gets the kill on Rel. Kha'Zix popping off, gets the kill for Morgana on the Victor. Kaisa gets the kill on Skarner. Kaisa is really popping off now with the damage and gets the triple kill. This is huge for blue team. 
Kai'Sa really popping off in this team fight, and Malphite not being able to do anything. Kha'Zix, like I said, really showing up in these in this team fight, getting Morgana that kill, although it was not intentional. I bet he really wanted that one, but actually doing a great job dishing out that damage on the mage. Yeah, and red team going for a drake, take the drake, but then just getting way too split up, Rel engaging on that bot side, but then being alone, Kalista staying close to the pit, and everyone was kind of fighting as their own battle, and they ended up just getting teamed on the Morgana, Kaisa surviving their Rel engage because there was no damage to follow it up, and then Kaisa just ended up going around, the last hitting whatever people were just low because of their fights that were happening. <coughs> and Malphite ended up not having an impact in the fight at all. Or didn't even use his teleport, so got to stay top. And is now almost 40 CS above the Malphite. And this is not looking good for Red Side, Garlic Brand Mafia. Just outplaying completely in the fight. We already have Gale Force completed for Kai'Sa, a huge power spike right now, since she already has Dirk. Rel trying to engage on Morgana, and Morgana uses the Black Shield, and Rel will not use her stun because she was not in rage. Kalista ults Rel, tries to get the re-engage, Morgana gets stunned, but pops the ult and gets the lifesteal oh, Omnivum that she gets from the passive, gets health back. Kai'Sa will finish off Rel, and Anita Teleport actually finishes off Kalista, an insane rotation by Blue Team. Victor now getting picked off since he tried to match the Nivea rotation. But Kha'Zix and, Mo and Morgana are ready as well as Nivea. And pick him off in a kill for Kha'Zix right now. Blue Team completely dominating this match right now. And this game is looking like a mid-game powerhouse for Blue Team in terms of gold. Yeah, and I think this is the final nail in the coffin for bot lane. Trying to go in for that engage. Missing the Callisto ult, just whiffing, not hitting Morgana. And then Morgana getting to survive, getting to pop the ultimate. Orn, since he didn't use the teleport in the last fight. Uh, oh no, actually it was Anivia teleporting in. And just, uh, just turning it around. There was no cooldowns from the part of uh, Red Side bot lane. There was, they already had used everything trying to get that that first engage off those first kills being unsuccessful and then just getting turned around and i i don't think they'll have any chance of winning the 2v2 now i think guys are just way too ahead getting the qss as well for the skarner ult um just making sure that there is no skarner just trying to get that ult and getting a pick off and I, I, I really think uh, Garlic Red Mafia is really, really ahead in this game. And they, they're they the ones with the scaling comp. They're the ones with the Anivia Kai'Sa. They're the ones that are looking to get into those late game fights. Kalista is going to have a very, very rough time doing anything. Especially with... more so kind of damage. Yeah, especially... Oh, Kal Kai'Sa getting picked oh, off in the top lane. Skarner oh, completely... The she QSS. with the QSS. Malphite going deep for the kill, gets the Q off, well, and is gold. trying to run away, but he will die to Kha'Zix right now. It is but indeed a free kill for him. 900 gold kill, getting the shot Kaisa. And that QSS, I think it, had he hit that QSS, he would have been fine, but he tries to go for the perfect QSS. Rel engaged yeah. in the mid lane. Victor Kalista in collapse, Agnivia time, but I think this will be another blue-sided team fight, maybe? Victor is still healthy, but remember, Kha'Zix still has a lot of damage, but Morgana will fall down, and this actually goes towards red team. A nice pick-off in the mid lane, really risky one, but turned out really well, because Anivia just wasn't in a great position since the beginning. Now they're trying to go for the red, for the Infernal Drake, actually. So this is actually really nice turn of events for Red Team to get back into the game. Victor really showing off his damage now with the new item changes that he got. And now this will seem like a Red... Like an Infernal Drake, I'm, I'm keep calling it Red Drake. 
an infernal drake for a red team. Let's see if Kazakh tries to go in for the steal. He jumps over, gets the steal. No, he doesn't. Skarner gets and the smile. And it's another shutdown into the Malphite. And it's, it's kind of unfortunate that it's a Malphite getting all of these shutdowns. But uh, it, it's still a lot of going on someone. Ooh, Malphite getting picked off. A really nice burn with the Morgana W and the ult from Anivia. The Anivia flashes forward to get the stun off. She gets the stun off and gets the kill off. Malphite, actually a really nice play from both Anivia and Morgana. Really showing off that they know what they are doing with their champions. Some nice walls, some nice stuns, some nice priority play. And this will be the end of Malphite for now. I think this is going to be... This is the first Rift title, right? Uh, this... I'm not sure if it's the first or second, but it's it's gonna be the last one either way, and plates are down, so... Uh, it's not gonna have the biggest impact. I guess you have nothing else to take on the map. You might as well take it. Um, but it's it's not gonna have the biggest impact. Um, maybe help uh, push another turret if they manage to get a a, a chance to place it. But uh, yeah, I do think I do think Orc Red Mafia here. They got a few minutes there where they were getting a little bit too excited, um, trying to, you know, they've been winning fights, they're just going for fights. They weren't really theirs to take, and a good punish uh, from the other side. But um, we'll see if it's enough, uh, if it was enough of a throw to get... Um, uh, to get back into the game, um, they at least got the dragon opened up. May possibly, if they get to win a, a couple next fights, that dragon soul condition forcing Blue Team to fight. But I'm not sure. We'll see how uh, Garakor Mafia respond to this kind of blunder in the mid game, taking a few fights that they really didn't need to take. Um, but they do still have the control in the map right now. They do still have the strongest fighting and if everything is normal. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see how these teams play and what they prioritize. Orn is really strong right now. If Orn joins and teams up with his own team, I think this will be a s smashing team fight for Blue Team. They will probably get out on top. Orn is incredibly tanky. I do not see anyone on the red team melting the enormous resistances and that and health bar that he has. The durability of Orn is huge, and the damage that he has from the follow-up of his team, both from Anivia and Kaisa. But now we see actually Anivia getting picked off in the mid lane, gets a nice wall on the Skarner, does not connect the stun properly. Actually connects the stun with Kaisa in Kalista. But Kaisa ults in the middle, Kazix gets the finishing blow on Kalista, Skarner going for Anivia, Orn is here, and Orn is completely fine, he will kill Skarner and will kill Varel, Kazix is completely taken down by Victor, and Morgana has to flash out, but Orn is still alive, and Orn can still turn this around with Anivia. Morgana is pushing up as well as Anivia, trying to get a nice wall, nice wall gets pushed down, nice stun as well, the binding does not connect, but that is not needed, and Rel goes down. Orn still untouched. I re it's really bad ult from Kaisa though. I did not know. I have no idea why Kaisa ulted into the middle of the fight. <laughs> but either ways, still in the advantage. Orn goes for the tower dive with the Anivia stun and Morgana bind, and gets the kill off Malphite. Orn still untouched. Another nice binding and stun from Anivia and Morgana. This is really, really being a good synergy from both these champions. With the stun there, doesn't need to hit it though, because they got the kills to match the kills that they lost in that team fight. Yeah, and it started off looking really good for um, the red team. Getting that initial pick on Anivia, they do miss a couple of key skill shots that allowed her to delay enough um, for the, her team to arrive. But then Kaisa jumping in Maybe not realizing the teleport and how many members actually were in there. Fighting the bot uh, lanes. Scarn tried to pick them off. Sorry to interrupt, but 
this will seem like a red uh, uh, and then uh, Drake fights for the <laughs> Infernal. I keep calling it red. It's annoying me. Okay, so you now have a standard setup trying to clear out the vision from both teams. Big boy Malphite has the oh, elixir. Plank, double teleport. Oh, the double teleport. This might be actually really bad for blue team because they're really separated, but actually really good. Kalista gets... Ooh, Kalista gets completely popped. Really bad positioning. Orn gets a knock on Victor. Victor will get done as well. There is no damage delivered left on the red team. And Kaisa, Anivia, and Morgana are still alive. Orn being completely untouched as usual. And this will go complete smashing five for blue team. Complete massacre. The double teleport into the wave that was pushed in the tower. And Orn and Anivia just going back. Red team trying to force into the three members. They end up not being able to force. Callista just disappeared from the face of the Summoner's Rift. Not, not didn't have enough time to even flash. And then as soon as Callista's dead, Victor doesn't have enough damage. Everyone was alive. And it was just complete carnage. No chance in hell Red Team was getting even close to it. Kha'Zix using his damage to pick off the last remaining the, uh, damage dealer, actually. Kha'Zix pick, I'm starting to understand the Kha'Zix pick. Since Red Team only has two damage dealers, if Kha'Zix can at least zone out one of them from the team fight, then that leaves only one left to dish out damage versus an Orn. That's never gonna happen. So, blue team showing off the reason why they picked the Kha'Zix, even though Kha'Zix seemed a bit of a not that great pick. Although I still think there are are some champions that would do what Kha'Zix is doing, but have a little else in it for them. But still, seeming like a blue side victory for now, Orn still hasn't been touched in any of these team fights. They do not know how to melt Orn or deal damage to him. There's just no DPS available to take care of him. He has two complete items. He will go towards the third one. And soon he will start upgrading items and his own items as well. So that is going to be a real, real big problem for Red Team. Yeah, and uh, I do think it's it's just too late in the game, and we are seeing a Baron in the beginning. Uh, Anivia's box be... with no teleport. It's going to be a strange fight since Anivia has no teleport, but Vector does not have teleport as well, so this is indeed a 4v4. This will break. This Baron will fall to the blue team. Red team cannot do anything. And the pit just completely sneaked the Baron with the Kaiser damage. There, in red team by the time red team got close enough to get some vision down, it's already dead. Seeming like a. Ooh, look at this pick in the mid lane. Black Shield has been burned, but Black Shield will soon go out. Zonius has been popped. But she will inevitably die. This is now a 4v5 if the red team tries to push anything. But they are now falling back. Trying to catch the top lane wave since inhibitor is indeed open. And it's a decent pick that they got off. If they can do this again and then fight the 4v5, they might have a chance. But I still doubt they know how to deal with the Orn problem. Orn is indeed a giant problem, as I've been saying. Yeah, and... Um... And uh, the results of the last fight we've had is that uh, Garlic Brand Mafia got that uh, Infernal Drake and stopped the Drakes for uh, Red Team. They were we looking at it at some point, and Skarner is probably dead here. Has the flash okay. away, and if it goes in for the kill, Rel tries to save, doesn't isn't able to, wall has been popped, Kha'Zix still Okay, Goes Invisible does not try to re-engage. And this is indeed a giant Anivia gap in the mid lane. Anivia doing some really great plays with the wall, as well as synergizing really well with the support. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see. I, I, don't, I don't think Red Team can come back from this, I think. Uh, it's it's too much, and it's the scaling team that's got the advantage. Um, but we'll see. It's always possible for a throw to happen. Although Dragon, Dragon will have well. 
Dragon will be spawning. Blue team has complete control right now of the map. Morgana, bit overextending. She might die again, but might not, because they do not know where blue team is. That might be a trap. A navy with a nice stun wall. Skarner is completely dead. Mouthfight all trying to retaliate. Rail engage as well. The nice combo from red team, but I doubt the damage is there and is enough, because Kais is still alive, and the navy is still alive, as well as Morgana. Kha'Zix gets the kill off Victor. Kaiser gets off the kill off of Malphite and Morgana finishes off Rel. Kazix is still alive, amazingly enough. And Orn just walks up and exists. <laughs> Orn didn't even participate participate in the fight. He burned ultimate though, trying to help out. And this will be GG. Yeah, and a clean fight. A little bit scary in a few moments here, but uh, again, just like the first game, just their wallets are just too big, there are too many items, and especially this game, with the scaling comp, there is no damage from the red team, apart from the vector burst, Callist is just not strong enough. Just some good synergy between the support and the mid laner, they caught off so many picks. Definitely, the support has been popping off these two games, definitely the MVP of both of these games combined. Really nice bindings, really nice engages, really nice plays, nice synergy with the mid laner getting Anivia ahead more than she was already. Kha'Zix, surprising pick, but get but got the job done, surprisingly, and did a nice job versus Karner, actually. Yeah, um, I think it was a game that was not as one-sided as our first game. I think there were a few moments where Garlic Bread Mafia got a little bit too ahead, maybe tried to force something where they couldn't really force it. Um, but it ended up being situations where we couldn't lead to anything else. There wasn't really, even if they got the kill, there wasn't really any objective to be taken away. And when the important fights came around, when those Drake fights, when those, you know, big team fights came around, just really well played, just getting a lot of advantages and um, ending up just too strong, getting too big of a lead in the early game. And then, yeah, that, that was it. And uh, we're going to have now an interview with Silver Wisp here. Middle laner for Garlic Bread Mafia. How are you doing? How do you feel after this win? Doing good. We were we were quite worried for this series, considering they were the the Div three winners. We we were quite worried for this, so I'm I'm pretty chuffed to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got some surprising um, Anivia in the mid lane with the synergy with the bot laner. Do you yeah, really the, have a synergy? I'm. Uh, we've never actually played the the Morgana and Anivia before. This was kind of a. Draft was a bit hectic for us, so we ended up just taking... Morgana was going to be flexed into jungle, and then we didn't really know what was going on. <laughs> but <laughs> the combo is really nice, and um, the amount... It's it's the, the wall, like, like the lack of respect for the wall in, in like corridors of the jungle it means that like Anivia and Morgana is nuts. Uh, <laughs> Both of them have actually having a lot of survivability with the Agnivia and the Morgana Black Shield. It's really hard for them to pick you off. Morgana, though... Kind of overextending alone some some parts of the game, kind of ending up dying. What, he, what he's an Alistar, mate. Online? He play he plays Thresh, Leona, Alistar. Sometimes I think he forgets that uh, <laughs> he's on Morgana. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, some nice popping off actually with the uh, Rel as well. Um, your Galio with the you, you did you actually uh, do you actually practice practice a lot with the Galio Camille combo? Uh, yeah. Before joining the the team. Nick, our top lane at Fender and had never played Camille, but we literally grinded. I, almost every scrim we've played has been Camille Gallio <laughs> and like Clash <laughs> and stuff. So yeah, it's a very, it's a really, really nice combo to use. Uh, yeah. Well, it was a fun two games. Actually, really surprising plays. I was not expecting that much synergy from your team and or the enemy team. Both teams actually played really well, but your team came out on top. Really nice synergy mid lane with with the support. How do you think? That what what went wrong that we, you guys wouldn't expect in this last game though? I mean, the game felt like 
we we always had a plan that we can i mean the the worst thing was the kazakh's pick our, our we were going to pick hecarim and our support didn't actually have hecarim uh we pleasantly <laughs> surprised that it worked uh but we was not Kazakhs was literally just locking in a champion uh so the random pick really did pull through but after that like as soon as we were in the game i felt like uh like dying a couple of times on anivia was obviously annoying i'm apparently just really good at dying two times in lane and phase <laughs> it's happened literally every vl game so far but consistently uh, like the, throughout the whole game we had a game plan and we stuck to it and it just kind of worked yeah yeah and we, we saw the bot lane um even against such a oppressive bot lane with a callista rel being able to get those skills get the level one were you at all worried that that callista was going to get out of control uh, i not really. Callista is a uh, the team comp, like especially with the Anivia, Callista struggles a lot with like uh, slows in general, and the the storm just shuts down Callista. Like we were never really worried. And the bot lane on its own, uh, Morgana is like a great counter pick into Ral. Like there's almost no kill pressure, and uh, Jump is a very good player. Like he knows how to play against Callista. He's not just gonna like get auto attack seven times at level one and die. <laughs> it's the classic. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it was a very good series. Um... What are you looking forward to in the next few games? What, uh, what are you? Are, is there anything you're expecting to pull out that you can give a little teaser on? Oh, <laughs> I could spoil the surprises. I will say we have some some strategies which we've been like theory crafting for a while, which we just haven't needed to use. Uh, and there's a few picks that I think will be very surprising in certain situations. We've 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 looked at some comps and we're very interested to use them, uh, especially. I don't really want to like give information to potential opponents, of course, of but course. expect some uh, some very questionable things in draft, <laughs> or they'll look questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, taking uh, this time to talk to us. Congratulations on the win! Very clean thank gameplay, you. and um, good luck for the rest of the uh, the games. People who bet on that five percent in the uh, <laughs> the Twitch chat, sure. <laughs> Our loyal fan base in the in the Twitch chat betting on us. <laughs> Ended up getting a lot of big payout. Mm. So yeah, um, great games today. A clean two zero from Garlic Bread Mafia. Hundred percent win rate in the league so far. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how you guys manage to um continue up with this uh, winning streak. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Thank you for your time, and good luck in your next games. Thank you. Good luck. And from our side, that's going to be it for today. Um, we hope everyone had fun with the games. They were slightly one-sided, but we did get to see um, some good plays uh, and some very interesting fights. Um, and yeah, that's it from us. We will see you in the next game.